Welcome everyone, Russ Barkley here again. And in this commentary, I'd like to discuss the issue of whether treating children with ADHD with stimulant medication in childhood or adolescence increases the likelihood that they're going to be substance abusers later. Usually this implies substance abuse of stimulants such as nicotine, cocaine, methamphetamine. This idea just won't die. It keeps coming up time and again over the decades that I have been involved in studying ADHD. It, it first got started back probably in the 70s or 80s with statements that if you give stimulants like methylphenidate to rodents, you know, mice or rats in a lab study, it seems to increase their reward-seeking behavior. It seems to stimulate the production of dopamine, of course, and it might lead to a increased or hypersensitivity of certain brain regions to dopamine in the sense that if you then take away the stimulant, the individual is left more sensitive to dopamine, more reward seeking, and is more likely then to go out and pursue abuse of any stimulant that might increase that dopamine yet again. So the idea was from these animal studies that stimulant medication given to children might be doing the same thing that was being seen in some of these studies of dopamine sensitization. Uh, and so we're going to talk about that because although there's a reason to raise that hypothesis given the animal studies, there's also a reason to be skeptical about those early studies. First of all, they were using very high doses of medication. Second, they were using mice and rats. And although their brains are similar to those of humans, they're not identical in necessarily the way they're organized or the way that they respond to medication. Uh, thirdly, these high doses of stimulants were being either injected into the brain directly or were being given intravenously. In other words, they're being given through routes of administration that are not the same as how they are used in human populations with ADHD, where we have oral administration of the medication primarily. And in one instance, there is a skin patch that can be worn, the Daytrona patch for use of methylphenidate. But the routes of getting the medication into the body are very different in how we use these drugs clinically than what was being seen in these animal studies. But okay, I get it. Back 40 years ago or more, as these animal studies were being published, it did raise the suspicion that maybe this could happen in children, leading to greater sensitization to dopamine and greater uh, substance abuse later it, with dopamine increasing substances. So. Uh, that's where things were back in the 80s and 90s. And this debate was going back and forth and there didn't seem to be much resolution of it. And the Scientologists picked up on this and they used it to badmouth the use of these medications with ADHD as part of their campaigns against ADHD being a disorder at all. It was picked up by certain sociologists and social critics, probably also aligned to some extent or sympathetic with the arguments being made by Scientology, but it was just a, a real mess of ideas back then. And then the actual research started to appear, research on ADHD children that were being followed over time into adulthood. And these studies allowed us to directly test this suspicion that stimulant medication given to these children increases their risk for later drug use. So I'm gonna start here with my own paper. This is from 2003. It's based on our Milwaukee Longitudinal Study. It was published in the journal Pediatrics. And it's a direct test of this idea. These are children that we had been following now for 10 to 15 years or more into their young adult years. We picked them up when they were about 05 to 9 years of age and we followed them into their 20s in this case and into their late 20s in some of our other studies. And so we were able to compare the children who were treated with stimulant medication 
to those who weren't. And we looked at their frequency of drug use in later life, their frequency of substance use disorders, and so on. Uh, and here's what we found. With appropriate controls, of course, for other confounding factors, we found that taking stimulants in childhood did not increase the risk of using stimulant medications or of using cocaine or nicotine or any other substances by adulthood. What we did find, and what many, many other studies have found before and since, is that having ADHD predisposes to those drug use outcomes. I've talked about that in other lectures here. Uh, I'm not going to go back over that, but ADHD does predispose to subsequent drug use of all sorts, but particularly nicotine, alcohol, and marijuana. And if you have conduct disorder with your ADHD, then you're getting into other drugs like cocaine, methamphetamine, uh, opioids, prescription drugs, and so on. But this study finds that the kids who were treated in their childhood with stimulants followed over time did not have any increased risk of drug use compared to the kids who never took stimulants. Both groups had an increased risk of, of substance use by virtue of having ADHD. That was it. And by the way, within this paper, we also reviewed the results of 11 previous studies that found no compelling evidence that stimulant medication predisposes children to later drug abuse. So uh, that study, you would hope, along with the review of the other 11 studies, should have put this baby to rest. But it didn't because it kept coming up every few years in the trade media. I don't know if this is because journalists are looking for clickbait and they want a sensational story. I don't know if it has to do with anecdotes about ADHD people who are abusing stimulant medication like the kind that the New York Times published over a decade ago. Uh, those are anecdotes. anecdotes, excuse me. They can't answer the question that we want answered here because they, they're not studies, they're not research, they don't have appropriate controls. But they keep bringing this idea back up before the public that these drugs are bad for children in the sense that they might make them more likely to abuse drugs. So let's get rid of that paper and let's go on and see that in 2008, a couple years after our study, Joe Biederman and his colleagues, this is the late Joe Biederman, who unfortunately passed away earlier this year, one of the greatest child psychopharmacologists in history, um, and unfortunately he's no longer with us. But Joe and his colleagues also used their longitudinal study to look at the same idea. And we don't necessarily need to go into the weeds here about his sample sizes, they were large, and his analyses, they were appropriately done. Uh, and what did he find? Conclusion, the findings revealed no evidence that stimulant treatment in childhood increased the risk of, sub of subsequent substance use disorders in children or teens with ADHD. So there's another nail in the coffin, yet another study. Uh, and then we have another study by Biederman's group. This was authored by Steve Ferrone. This is looking at adults with ADHD who they were able to go back and get histories of their medication treatments and how much they took and so on. And so it's kind of starting in adulthood and looking back and then looking at who was treated with stimulants, who wasn't, and did that have any impact on substance use or abuse going forward into adulthood? And the answer is no. There were no differences in the study between adults who as children took stimulants and adults who did not. And they looked at cigarette smoking, alcohol, and a variety of other drugs just as we did. So they didn't find it either. So there's another negative study. Then we have this study over in Europe, published in the British Journal of Psychiatry by Gronman and Associates. They did the same thing. They have a longitudinal study. They assess children at baseline. They followed them up over time. They have appropriate controls, both typical children and ADHD children who were and were not treated with medication. They did what we did. They looked at duration of treatment with stimulants, uh, the amount of stimulants and so on. They controlled for appropriate comorbid disorders like conduct disorder that we know 
predispose to later drug use. And what did they find? <clears throat> Same thing. Stimulant treatment not only did not increase the risk of later drug use, they found evidence that it actually decreased the likelihood of having a substance use disorder later, and that the earlier the children had been treated, the more likely they were to show a protective effect, being less likely to turn to drug use uh, and drug use disorders. So there is at least one study that might show a protective effect. I don't want to make too much of that because other studies didn't see that kind of protection, though several of them did find it for certain kinds of substances. The point here is this. Again, there's no evidence that childhood treatment with stimulants turns people into later drug users. Uh, and then we have this meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is a summary of all of the existing research. And in this paper, they were able to find a number of past studies, my own included, analyze all of the data together and take a look at this issue. Again, what did they find? These res results provide no evidence that treatment of ADHD with stimulant medication neither protects nor increases the risk of later substance use disorders. So this is yet another review besides my own that reaches that same conclusion. Uh, and then we have this paper published just this week by my friend and colleague Brooke Molina at Pittsburgh using her Pittsburgh Longitudinal Study, where they also examined this issue. They have 547 children in this longitudinal study, and they were able to compare those who had been treated with stimulants, those who had not, and again, they looked at the kinds of stimulants as well as the dosages and length of time and so on. But the bottom line is this. This study found no evidence that stimulant treatment prescribed in childhood or adolescence either protects against or increases the risk of later use of alcohol, cigarettes, marijuana, or any other substances by age 25. So once again, it's just not there. And here we have yet another study this week that shows that. Here is a great review by Gerlach and colleagues on why stimulants are probably not going to be found to harm the dopamine system in the brain, given how they are used to treat ADHD. So this goes back to the point that I made earlier. Just because you drop these drugs directly into the brain or into the bloodstream and it looks like you get this hypersensitivity to dopamine and maybe an increased risk of drug abuse or at least drug seeking behavior, this paper reviews all of those studies and also points out that the way we use them in childhood is quite different. The route of administration of the medicine appears to be incredibly important. And Nora Volkow showed this many years ago in her studies of neuroimaging of how stimulants affect the brain. And the bottom line of her study was that if you take a stimulant, inject it, inhale it nasally, <clears throat> or in the case of animals, put it directly into their brain, you get this very rapid rush of medication into the brain and a very rapid removal of the drug from the brain. And it's that rapid entrance into the brain and then out of the brain that creates the euphoric, the addictive aspects of these medications. But that's not how we use them in clinical practice. We give them orally. And as she found, through oral administration, there's a much more gradual rise in the medication within the brain and a much more gradual decline of the medication out of the brain. So the signature on neuroimaging that would suggest that this is going to lead to addiction or hypersensitivity to the medication isn't there when we look at oral use of stimulants. So these animal studies that got all of this started back in the 80s probably are pertinent to stimulant abusers. 
people who are taking the medication nasally, intravenously, and may well become, be becoming very hypersensitive to the medication and increase their medication-seeking behavior. But we just don't see that when we look at stimulants being used properly in clinical practice with primarily oral routes of administration. So I hope that we can finally lay to rest this idea that stimulant treatment is harmful to children with ADHD because it makes them more likely to abuse drugs later on. We now have many, many studies, reviews, and meta-analyses that show this simply isn't true. So I hope you'll spread the word about this when it comes up in conversations. I hope you'll tune in again to this channel for other commentaries uh, and that you found this information to be useful. Thanks for joining me. Be well.